Okay, so this is the third video on the grade 11 chapter on Newton's laws. And in this video, we're looking at applying Newton's second law to motion in the horizontal plane. So in order to do that, let's go to question three on page 18 of our notes. And we're looking at this question where we've got two vehicles attached by a chain and the system is moving to the left. So let's highlight a few important points here. We've got a mass of the truck of 4,000 kilograms. We've got a car of mass 1,000. They're joined by a chain. That chain won't stretch. So both vehicles will accelerate at the same rate. We're told that the truck exerts the engine on the truck exerts a forward force of 25,000 newtons and that there's friction on both vehicles 3,000 newtons on the truck 1,500 newtons on the car and in two questions here one the first question we've asked to find the acceleration of the system and in the second question we asked to find the tension in that chain so I want you to pause the video and attempt the question and then come back and check your answer So now that you've had a go at the question, the first thing we need to do is identify all the forces that are acting on each vehicle in the plane in which it's accelerating. So this vehicle, these vehicles are accelerating in the horizontal plane. So we need to look at the forces in the horizontal plane. So that there's a forward force of 25,000 newtons on the truck. So we're just looking at the forces acting on the truck here. And there's a forward force from the engine. There's a backward force of the tension in the chain. So I think we need to just spend a moment identifying that there's a forward force here on the car from the chain, the tension in the chain. But at the same time, there's a backward force on the truck. And that's the tension in the chain. These two tensions are equal. The tension throughout the chain is the same, but the tension acts to the left on the car, but the tension acts to the right on the truck. So there's that tension force acting opposite to its motion, and obviously the truck also experiences a frictional force. The car it's got that forward tension force and a backward frictional force. So it's really important to identify all the horizontal forces acting on each vehicle. And then we can go along and apply Newton's second law to each vehicle. So working on the left here for the truck, if net is equal to mass times acceleration, Newton's second law. And then on the left, we write down an expression for all the forces acting on the tr on the truck. So there's a forward force of 25,000 newtons. There's a backward tension force, so we've got to subtract that. And the friction also acts to the right, so we need to subtract that. So here we're assuming that forward is taken as positive. F minus T minus friction gives you the net force acting on that truck. And the mass in question here is the mass of the truck, that's 4,000 kilograms. So substituting some values in, 25,000 newtons for the forward force, 3,000 for the friction, and there's the mass. And if we work this statement, we can solve for the tension in the chain. And if you do the maths properly, you should get an expression like that. For the tension in the chain and this is for the truck this is an expression for the truck but there are two unknowns here in this equation so we need a second equation in both those unknowns in both those variables so if we turn our attention to the car we're applying newton's second law to the car if net is mass times acceleration the net force acting on the car is the forward force of tension minus the frictional force because they act in opposite directions yeah again to the left is chosen as positive 
The mass in question now is 1,600. It's a mass of the car. We know the frictional force on the car. And if we solve for T, we get 1,500 plus 1,600A. So we have a second expression for those two variables, those two unknowns, T and A. Well, we know that these two tensions are the same. So we can set these two expressions equal to each other. So we're solving simultaneously. When we accept the two expressions equal to each other and do the maths, we eliminate T and we get an answer for the acceleration of the vehicle. Sorry, of the of the system. The acceleration of the system is 3.66 meters per second squared, and that's going to be to the left. To find the tension now, we would have to substitute that acceleration into one any one of these two expressions. Both will work, and if I chose I chose the car and I substituted my acceleration for A and solved and I got 7,356 newtons. I haven't put a direction here because the direction depends on the vehicle we're looking at. So on the truck, the direction of the tension is to the right, but on the car, the direction of the tension force is to the left. Let's look at a second example. This one's also from our notes. It's on page 18 of the notes. It's question 4, so let's go there. And here it is. We've got two boxes that are resting against each other. 5 kg and a 10 kg. We've got this applied force that's being applied to the 5 kg only. And they tell us that the boxes accelerate across the floor. And they tell us that there's a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.2. In the first question, you asked to draw free body diagrams for each box, so that's essential in order to identify the horizontal forces acting on the boxes and in the second part find the acceleration of both boxes and in the third part you ask to find the force that the 10 kg exerts on the 5 kg box and so that's very specific so its direction is going to be important so I want you to pause the video Attempt those three questions and then come back for the answers. Okay, so we've got two boxes pressing against each other and we're applying a forward force here of 45 newtons to the 5 kg box. There's the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we'll use that later to find frictional forces. But in the first part, we needed to find the forces acting on each box. So we needed to draw a free body diagram. So let's just focus on the 5 kg box here. Obviously, it has a weight and the normal force that the ground exerts up on it. We'll need that for the frictional force. And then in terms of the horizontal forces, the 5 kg box experiences an applied force here of 45 newtons. It also experiences a frictional force that's opposing its motion. And then there's this force that I've labeled X. And I've called it the force of the 10 kg on the 5 kg. So as the 5 kg presses against the 10 kg, it exerts a forward force on the 10 kg. At the same time, according to Newton's third law, the 10 kg should exert an equal and opposite force x on the 5 kg. So that's an action-reaction pair of forces. 5 kg pushes on 10 kg with a force x. At the same time, 10 kg pushes on 5 kg with the same force x. 
these forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so there's that force force of the 10 kg on the 5 kg this is a free body diagram for the 5 kg only and then let's look at the free body diagram for the 10 kg it also experiences a normal force from the ground and it has a weight and it's important to realize here that these the normal force and the weight are exactly equal to each other in magnitude because there's no other forces acting at an angle so there are no components of any other forces that we need to deal with so it's a box on a horizontal plane there are no all the forces are in the horizontal plane so the normal force will have to be equal to the weight which we'll need to find use to find when we when we look for the frictional force so let's go and apply Newton's second law to the 5 kg if net is equal to m times a left hand side is your net force and if we look at the horizontal forces that are acting f is to the right friction is to the left and x is to the left on the 5 kg f minus friction minus x is equal to mass times acceleration the mass in question here is 5 kilograms there's our forward force of 45 we don't know the friction yet and we certainly don't know this contact force x but we can find the frictional force from the coefficient of kinetic friction and the normal force acting on the 5 kg box coefficient of friction is 0.2 the mass is 5 and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 so the normal force is equal to the weight for that box and that gives us an answer of 9.8 newtons for the 5 kg box for the frictional force acting on it let's go to the car now uh, sorry the 10 kg box and apply Newton's second law here we've got a forward force x on the box from the 5 kg minus the frictional force and the mass in question is 10 kilograms we need to find the frictional force acting on the 10 kg so again it's the coefficient times its weight so that's the normal force equal to the weight and this time we get 19.6 newtons of friction acting on the 10 kg so if we substitute those two frictional forces into our expressions if we go back to the 5 kg it's the forward force of 45 minus friction minus x is 5 times a and if we solve for x we get that expression so we've got an expression here in two unknowns so we need a second expression in those two unknowns so if we go back to our expression for the 10 kg it's the forward force x minus friction 19.6 and the mass is 10 and if we solve for x we get that expression for the 10 kg box well because these two forces x on each box are equal in magnitude we can uh, set these two expressions to be equal to each other and if we do that and solve for a we get an answer for the acceleration of the system which is the same for both boxes so this system will accelerate to the right at 1.04 meters per second squared to then find the force of the 10 kg on the 5 kg we need to substitute this acceleration back into any one of these two expressions here so I chose that one and I substituted my acceleration in So I'm using this expression, I substituted my acceleration in and I got an answer of 30 newtons 
in this case to the left because that force of the 10 kg is directed to the left on the 5 kg. So there are the two solutions. I hope you got the right answers.